So Kelly, welcome to the Creative Spin Podcast. How are you? I am well, thank you. How are you, Jamie? Well, apparently I'm much colder on this end of the globe because you're in nice warm weather uh, all the way in Sydney. Yes, so I skip out of New York for the winter and come for the Australian summer and go back to the States in February, but I go back to Los Angeles because I'm still a bit of a baby about it. So, so uh, when are we going to get that invitation to do the same thing? Because that, that sounds amazing. <laughs> this is why I love working remote. I just, I don't do winter. I've decided to skip it. Today's podcast is brought to you by Workplace One, a company offering boutique, private offices, co-working spaces, and virtual office solutions, as well as meeting rooms in the best neighborhoods of Toronto and Kitchener-Waterloo. Ideal for entrepreneurs, companies, and passionate business people. Workplace One is where you want to be with your business. For more information, go over to WorkplaceOne.com. So, Kelly, um... Talk to us a little bit about who you are and what you do, because I think a lot of our a lot of our listeners, viewers are going to be uh, fascinated with all of the things that you do. Yeah, so I run the Talent Squad, which is a podcast guest booking agency, and we book podcast tours for entrepreneurs. So I have a background as a radio announcer and entertainment. I started as an intern way back in 2001 for Miramax, the film company. Mm -hmm. I started podcasting in 2007 and then um, got into guest booking in 2014 and started my own company in 2017. So that's the quick 20 year timeline. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, the, the business premises is really helping people uh, in, in getting into the podcast because it's not an easy thing, right? It's understanding uh, where you should be um, guesting, I guess, that, I don't know if that's the right term, but it, it can get difficult. A lot of people think, oh, you know, I'll just get into a podcast and just talk about what I do. but doing it properly that's what you're all about right so yeah. guide us through that so yeah you're right podcast guesting is the terminology that has been born in the last few years so that terminology is has been made up and is correct um yeah so it's about getting yourself on other people's podcasts and leveraging their audience but it's also about going on niche podcasts mm -hmm. and there's a few ways you can do it you can get an agency like me to do it. You can book yourself. You can get a team member to do it or you can DIY or get a mm -hmm. VA. So there's a few different ways. Um, the thing is podcast guesting is becoming more competitive. Yes, there's something like 750,000 podcasts at the moment. So it's really important to make sure you've got your messaging right, to make sure you have all your assets and collateral right, that you're pitching the right shows in the right way because they are media platforms. Yes, they are you know, mostly business owners that are doing their own shop like yourself, mm -hmm. but um, it's still important to have everything, all your ducks in a row and to be professional, professional about it and treat it as a media outlet because that's what it is. That That's very interesting. And I mean, the, I think the first thing that people need to, to realize is that you don't just call up or, or email up someone without having some sort of organization behind you in terms of having the right branding, the right... Uh, I don't know, all the, the information that's going to be needed because on the other end, when you receive that that um, that question of can I be in your podcast, you want to know who that person is as well. And that's what you guys really fine-tune, correct? Yeah, so it's less about, hey, I want to be on your podcast and this is why I'm awesome. And it's more about here is your show and here's what I can offer your audience. I see this gap and here's the value that I can bring because yeah. podcasts, especially interview podcasts when it comes to business and other niches, it's actually about edutainment. And I know it's kind of a dorky word, but really the podcast, just think about the podcast that you listen to. And for me, I like to be entertained, but I love to learn something at the same time and walk away with something that I can actually do at the end of that podcast. Mm -hmm. So what's your message? Who are you talking to? And what do you want them to do as a result of listening to you on a show? Gotcha. But how important is the branding of yourself as a company or as an individual, depending? Hugely important. So you're getting 
and you would know this because you have people pitch your show all the time. So you're judging a book by its cover. So what is the subject line? That's the first thing before the email even gets opened. Mm -hmm. If it's not great, it might go in the trash. (laughs) Um, And then it's the first few lines. Again, if it's boring, if it's stop, dear, sir, not even having a name. Um, insert, I really loved insert episode title of insert episode. (laughs) I love those emails. (laughs) Cut and paste isn't going to work. Podcast hosts are far too savvy to fall for that trick these days. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have your subject line. You've got to have your first few lines. Um, And then, and this is just to get to the point, I'm getting to the assets because the host is going to decide before they even, they may not even go to your website. Mm -hmm. So, but when they do go to the website, if you pass, pass those few gates to get there, your headshots have to be excellent. Your copy has to be excellent. Your messaging has to be excellent. So you've got to get through all those rounds before they even look at your branding. And if you get through those and it's a mess, then you've done all that work in finding, uh, vetting, writing the pitch, doing everything for the podcast, only for your assets to look like a dog's breakfast mm-hmm. and to not make it past the next point. So you need to have your one sheet right. You need to have your online press kit right. Um, if you've done other episodes, you need to have that on there. If I was just going to s- I was just have that on there. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to ask. So in terms of, okay, obviously if I want to be in somebody else's podcast, if I already have been in other podcasts, how important is it to have those episodes, let's say on your website when, if that's the information you're going to give them? Huge because they can see that you're a proven media expert. So they'll go there and any host and or producer um, will listen to other shows. They will Mm -hmm. look at your talking points. They will look at the bio that you've got. They will watch a video because they're vetting you for their show. So most people don't just go, oh yeah, that's a great subject line, great email, you're in. They will Mm -hmm. go through their own individual vetting process and decide if you are good enough or not and if they can hear you on another podcast they'll just be able to listen for a few minutes and okay they know what they're talking about yes they're confident yes they're going to suit my audience it's it's all about checking boxes on whatever the individual's list is so i would absolutely and and as you do more podcasts you're able to leverage those for bigger and different shows and different audiences so it builds on itself so i mean at the end of the day, how important are podcasts nowadays when, when we're looking from a business perspective, I guess? What, what's your thought? Um, you can, it helps with your expertise, positioning yourself as an expert. It helps getting you better in speaking. It helps you define your own messaging while you're on the show, which a lot of people, they think they've got their messaging in place. <laughs> lights on, lights off. <laughs> they don't know. I must have been sitting on the mic very still and the lights just went out thinking that I was dead. There you um, go. So um, the question was, sorry, I've been distracted by the lights going out. In the <laughs> no, the messaging, the messaging being on point, right, uh, for, for the podcast and, and how important that is in distributing that message, using the podcast to distribute that message. Yeah. And podcasting, it's about the relationship with the host, the relationship with the audience. Podcasting is evergreen. So it's not just today. Somebody could listen to it in a year's time. Mm -hmm. Most shows, I would say 99% of shows have uh, show notes. So those Mm -hmm. are going to have backlinks to your website. So people will find you that way. So the benefits for a business owner is expert status, exposure, relationships, SEO, and you get to spend 30 to 60 minutes with the audience, where if you're on TV, it might be three minutes with a broader audience, but podcasts are more specific and niche, um, Mm -hmm. less people, but highly focused. And people listening to podcasts are looking for podcasts. They're not just turning on the radio, turning on the TV, scrolling through an Instagram, stumbling across it. They either have a relationship with the host as an engaged listener, or they're looking for a solution to the problem. And what your topic is, has piqued their interest, so they're looking for it. So I think it is a huge part of business these days. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear you say this because I'm of the exact same opinion. And, and actually, we were asked not too long ago, why, why do you put, because we obviously we have the video component to our podcast and we put it on, on YouTube. Um, and I had someone ask me, why do you put such long videos? People don't watch such a long video. And, and what I told them was, and I want to know if you agree with that, if, and, somebody is watching a youtube video of a podcast they're they're actually there for the podcast not for the visuals i think 
I think if they're there, they're, they're, the way that they, they are approaching that video is not for a quick fix of a quick tip on something. They're actually going to be listening to the topic and going deep in the topic. Yeah, a lot of the time, I and I think I'm pretty typical of most people, I just want to have a little sticky beak at what the person looks like. And so I'll go and have a quick look and then I'll, I might watch a few minutes and I want to look at the studio. I want to look at a few things and then I'll keep it running in the background and go about my business. And I think that's pretty typical. The reason to put a podcast on um, YouTube is because it's the second biggest search engine, right? Exactly. So it's a, just a new way for people to find you. They understand it's a podcast. They'll have a sticky beak, but they may watch it or more likely they'll minimize it and have it going in the background. So I don't see what's so bad about that. So the question is, how long should the podcast be? I think that question, it doesn't matter. People exactly. listen to podcasts like they read a book. When you, <laughs> you don't say, you, if I'm in the middle of a book, people will say I'm in the middle of a podcast because they see a podcast as a whole. You don't say I'm in the middle of a blog article. I'm in the yeah. middle of a TV segment, you know? So I think people, if I'm driving somewhere and I'm listening to a podcast, I'll stop when I get out and then I'm in the middle of it and I'll resume when I get back. So the stats are, I think 86% of people listen to all or most of the podcasts. So yeah. people listen to it as a whole. And if you've got someone in your ears for 30 to 60 minutes, you get to hear their intonation, you get to hear their excitement, you get to hear their articulation. So there's a lot of information you get, which builds on the know, like, and trust factor. It expedites it, I would say. So mm -hmm. I feel like one podcast is worth a lot of touch points in other areas. Absolutely. I... Personal opinion. And um, what is your opinion on people pitching you? Because I'm sure you get pitched a lot. So... Uh, tell us what your experience has been. Well, I do exactly what you were saying. I, I'll, I'll uh, first, obviously, the email and how the email sounds is, is extremely important. Right from the get go, you'll know if this person is is serious or is are they just sending it to you know send all kind of uh, email. So after that part, I'll, I'll dig in and I'll try to find out a little bit more about what this person is and what they're what they do and all of that. And and I kind of say, OK, is this going to be important to my audience and who I'm trying to to you know provide information? And if it fits right in, then here we are. Here we are. <laughs> so in terms of, of the podcasting, uh, a lot of people say, oh, I've never done this. Uh, because uh, what we do with Creative Seven is we we also try to help uh, our own clients uh, ha start their own podcasts as well because we've seen uh, such great results with our own podcast that we advise our clients and we help them a lot with social media and and you know uh, podcasts for us and especially because we do video uh, it's a perfect gateway to to grab that long format of of information and being able to slice it all up and and then redistributing that throughout all the platforms is, is it's just a great way to to utilize that information um, but we always find that it's difficult to uh, to get our clients into that zone of being comfortable uh, doing a podcast and interestingly enough after they start they just keep on going mm -hmm. but uh, th that first step is is the most difficult part what would you like? What kind of advice would you give somebody that might be listening to us, might be watching us right now? Uh, what's your advice? Just start. My, yes, my advice is practice in private before you go public. That's something we say at the Talent Squad all the time. Now, what you can do on any laptop is just go and record yourself. And in radio, what we call it is live to tape. So pretend you're doing an interview and just practice. Even if you do three minutes a day, you'll get used to it. And just know that podcasting isn't live. It's live to tape. So if you make a mistake, you can pause and often the producer will edit that out. So it's less scary and it feels one-to-one. -one. You're not looking at a room of 500 people, 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. They're not looking back at you. So really it's actually an excellent interview for introverts. 
Mm -hmm. podcasting and you're talking about people starting their own podcast well if you're not sure if you want to do that do a podcast tour first go to other people's parties see how they run their show and then do your own and that way it's just getting a taste in the world you're leveraging other people's audiences and when you start your show up guess what if you've done say 10 or 12 podcasts that's 10 or 12 people you can invite on your show as a reciprocation so i would also suggest yeah doing a couple of practice interviews just get used to speaking to yourself then maybe ask a friend, family, colleague, assistant, whoever, whomever to interview you. So you get used to asking the questions. And by the time you've done that, you'll be ready to jump on a call with someone. So I don't think not having professional media experience, being in a green stream studio live on international news Mm -hmm. is a problem. I think you absolutely can start from where you are. And you're not going to be pitching the Tim Ferriss show. You're going to be pitching niche podcasts and pitch some uh, starting out podcasts because Mm -hmm. they're looking for guests at that level too. And as they grow and grow and grow, you're going to be one of the first people in the door. So you're more likely to get an invite back. Yes. So I think that there's absolutely opportunities for everybody to get involved in podcasts. There is a podcast on escalators. There is a podcast for everything. Absolutely, I agree. A lot. Uh, the other question I always get is, "Oh my God, I know nothing about technology and about sound, about video." I say, "Don't be afraid of that," because I, I think that in today's world, everything is a lot easier when it comes to tech. What's your point on that? You can be set up to do a podcast interview within 24 hours on Amazon Prime. Now, the setup I've got is specifically under i'd say under 115 dollars because i travel with this setup and Mm -hmm. i just find it easier and i want to show that anybody can do it with any mic setup they've got so what i've got is an atr 2100 which is the most common microphone you can just look that up and get it anywhere um and that i think is about 70 dollars um i've got a shock mount I've got a windsock. The windsock was $3 and the stand was about $15, $17. And so there's that's no it. excuse. And it's, and it's all USB. And I would say when people say just get started, but I would say make sure you've got a, a mic that plugs in and don't just use the computer mic because yeah. it is a bit like, would you show up to a job interview wearing a pair of shorts and a t-shirt? Probably not. When you're on a podcast, all you have is your sound. And if your sound doesn't sound great, that reflects on you. So get yourself set up for that $100, $115. um, And then just make sure you've got headphones as well and you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when it comes to audio, we were having some technical difficulties here uh, just a little while ago, but we got them solved and and we're we're off. So uh, one of the last questions is, is it getting too crowded nowadays? Because everybody apparently wants to get into podcasting. So the question is uh, that I always get is, oh, it's too crowded crowded now. Uh, I don't want to get into it. I mean, there's already too many people talking about the same thing. I still think that there's a lot of space. Everybody has their own opinion, their own way of saying things, their own way of experiencing things. Um, what, what are your two cents on that? I think that there are a lot of podcasts, but there is such a thing as pod fade. And pod fade is when somebody starts a podcast and then stops and they realize it's a lot of work. So not all those are active. Also, the amount of podcasts, there's all different genres. Like we were saying, there's there's all the true crime. Well, if you're not true crime, then that doesn't really count towards what you're doing. There's the escalator podcast. There's podcasts on everything. And it's not only for um, reaching audiences, It's also, like you said, slicing and dicing the content. So Mm -hmm. if you do a podcast, you can get a little video trailer from that. You can transcribe that. You can turn it into blog posts. You can pull quotes from that. You can put it on Instagram. You can have relationship building with that. So it's not about doing a show, getting downloads equals audience equals a $25 CPM from a 30 second advertisement. I think if you think bigger, podcasting has a lot of benefits beyond downloads an audience. So if you think that way, you'd be crazy not to get involved because there's so many ways you can use it for your business and your expert status. All right, cool, cool. So Kelly, uh, going back to, to what you do in your company, um, what, what has been the biggest, uh, I guess, throughout the years, the biggest difficulty that you've had in, in 
in getting things organized for people? Uh, are people just not ready to to have things organized so that they can pitch to to another podcast? What, what's been the uh, either the most difficult or the strangest one? I don't know. You pick. <laughs> I think that people have expectations. And they want to, well, if I'm getting a booker, then I want to be on Gary Vaynerchuk, Tim Ferriss, and Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. And that is not necessarily the case. If you look at the last, say, three to five to 10 to 20 experts on those shows, and if those people have been Oprah and Richard Branson, then you may not be in the category that those other people are. So is it realistic to expect that just because you hire a booker, you're going to get on those shows? Not really. So like we were saying, I think you need to start where you are. And the other thing that you were speaking about branding is, well, you need to have um, everything set in place because if any show comes, you can be, I've had people that are excellent guests, but their web presence does not reflect how excellent they are. So I've said, would love to work with you, but we need to go back and get a facelift on this website because if I was a producer, I would not book you based on what I see and I wouldn't book you. So if I'm not going to book you, then I can't pitch you. So mm. um, I think just having the socials in order, having you having it consistent as well. Yeah, you can't have one message on LinkedIn to Twitter to Facebook to all these different things. So having it consistency, your message consistency of consistent across platform and knowing what your key messaging is and what you're taking to market. And your take on social media in terms of, um, you know, being able to spread the word of your podcast. What do you, what do you think, which one is the best one in your, what do you think is the best one? Like right now I love LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And I have for a long time. I like as a user, I love Facebook, but when you put your things out there, we know with the algorithm, it's pay for play and the percentage is very low. We get mm -hmm. that. You get what you pay for. Exactly. So um, same with Instagram, people like Instagram, you can put the videos up there, but it depends on your audience and engagement. You'd have to look at the back end metrics and if you're doing sponsored or not sponsored. But again, I find for business, um, I'm personally finding LinkedIn, I'm, I'm just loving it. And a lot of people see your content there. So for me, mm -hmm. that's where I'd be posting. But again, you can put it in as simple as, um, how many emails do you send? Put that recent episode in the email signature. And a lot of people are going to see that. And they're people that are already interacting with you. So they're likely to listen to whatever you're on because they want to have a little spy and hear what you've got to say. That's a great idea. <laughs> so that's the little Trojan horse. You there you go. <laughs> so Kelly, uh, last words, anything you want to let our, our, um, our audience know uh, about either yourself or the talent squad or whatever you have, the last minute is yours. Oh, thanks. I would like to say, just get that mic set up. You can get started for less than a hundred dollars. And um, if you're going to pitch yourself or hire a booker, make sure you've got your assets and positioning in place, which is the one sheet and online press kit. Um, and yeah, just be, be done is not better than perfect. In this case, you really need to, you get one chance. So make sure that chance that you've got everything in the, your ducks in a row. So if you would like to see what we do, it's the talent squad.com and you're welcome to uh, check out the blog post. There's lots of tricks and tips on how to. Very cool. We'll put all the information down on the description on the YouTube and, and everywhere else. And Kelly, thank you so much for this. It was great uh, talk and a lot of good information. And hopefully we were able to help a lot of our uh, audience members that want to get into podcasting. Thank you so yes. much. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.